Folkies. Emily Balkan here. I really want to teach you this tune I just played. It's a very fun tune and one I despair to find people to play it with. So I'm gonna teach it to you, but this tune falls into the category of I know very little about it. It's quite a mysterious tune. Let me explain. I learned this tune from Mia Marin when I was her student at Erik Salström Institute in Tubo, and she gave it the name Reilander of Bo i Ranset. And that's quite a funny name, because Bo i Ranset is a wordplay in Swedish. At Bo means to live somewhere, but Bo is also a name, a first name. So Bo i Ranset can refer to someone called Bo in Ransäter, either happening to be there or living there, but at bo i ranset means to live in ranset. So I went into a hunt for some information. Ranset refers quite clearly to ransäter in Värmland, a quite well-known place for Swedish folk music as we have there one of our biggest and best Spelmanstemma, so gathering of folk musicians, Great festival, by the way, every June, you should go. But Bo i Ranset, who is that? <laughs> it sounds a lot like one of these nicknames for folk musicians. We have lots of these that are linked to where the person is from, or maybe the farm where they live, or their profession, aside from music. So I did some digging, and I didn't find much. The only mention I found on the internet of Bui Ranset is an album from 1977 which was called Unga Spelmen from Värmland, so young folk musicians from Värmland. And Bui Ranset is credited on three tracks, three tunes, including Reilande of Bui Ranset, this tune. I couldn't find anything else about this person except that mention for that album from the 70s. It's probably someone called Bo something, as it's a name, but it's not sure. some more because there is always more digging to do about musicians and tunes and repertoires in the traditional music genre and I ended up finding Bo Isaacson i Ranset. So the full name of this guy is Bo Isaacson and his nickname is Bo i Ranset. and under his real name he has contributed to at least four albums that I could find, which I will list in the description in case you are interested. So yes, all this little segment of the video to tell you that when you think there is no more to know about some tune or person or something in the folk or traditional music style, just go and dig deeper because there is always more and you will always learn a lot of stuff along the way. I really like this tune. I really want to have more people playing this tune with me so we can jam together. It's a very good tune, so let's learn it. Okay, let's get into the A part. We start on the high D and I can already tell you that the F is a little bit high, so we want a slightly higher F there. And let's go.
if you are a Mika Harpa player, yes, this tune is a lot of climbing and it is not easy. You will have to use a lot of different techniques, for example, replacing one finger with another in order to have enough reach or in order to have enough fingers on the right side of the keyboard. So it's a really, really good climbing exercise. Ornaments, let's get right into them. You have heard probably in the beginning of the video that I use a lot of the open D as a kind of emphasize of where the beat is. So. Two different possibilities. also a variation that you can play in this A part, but I don't know if it's Mia Marin who composed this variation or if it's actually a variation that was played by Pu Iranset himself. When you play the whole part, the last time you go through this main um, phrase instead of doing You can do once more. And a little thing that I personally love to do is to play with the rhythm. So I tend to play it very long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long, kind of clearly dotted. But if you stretch it up a little bit, it can get really heavy. And for me, this is a really heavy swinging tune somehow. So for example, instead of I would play It makes it a little bit heavier. Not to be played all the time like this, maybe, but as a little tasty spice to your playing, it's quite nice. And on to the B part. What's interesting about this B part is that the A part is in minor, but the B part is in major. And we are so happy about this change of feeling that we actually anticipate it a little bit with three notes before we land on the first beat of the B part. So... plays a very nice little variation. So the second time through the B part, instead of she replaces the G major chord by just a long G with the A major chord before Of the B part, 
the second time through them. And then there is a little bridgey thing that you can add at the end of the B part to lead back into the A part. And it's in minor and it's really cool. So the last time you play through the B part, instead of... You go from the chord, the A major chord, into the A part. So you use this, this F to indicate that now we are changing back into minor, which is really really cool. I'm gonna play the whole B part, so two times, with the variation and the little bridge, so you get the whole picture of how it goes, plus my most common ornaments. choose to stay in major and to finish on the B part, normal without the little bridgey thing, or you decide to do the bridge and go into the A part and you finish on the A part. For example, with... and you finish there, maybe after just one A part. It's up to you. <laughs> this tune is a little bit in the harder category, because of the climbing on the kaharpa, because it's fast, it has lots of chords and chord changes, basically. It changes from major to minor and the B part is just very harmonic. And all this is what makes it so fun, somehow. So I personally don't mind practicing tunes that are a little bit on the harder side when they are that fun. And the structure is also just so lively with all these little variations. You can come up with your own, and if you're hearing uh, bird noises, it's because they are birds just outside the window making noises right now. Uh, <laughs> I always have bird problems when I record. Okay, did I manage? Are you going to learn this tune? Please learn it and teach it to your friends and spread it so more people can play this very cool tune that is the Reilende of Bo Iranset. If you would like to have sheet music for this tune, and for many others, you can go check my Patreon, link in the description below. And I want to thank my patrons for the support. It means a lot to a freelancing musician who is against advertisement and therefore not getting any YouTube revenue. Stay tuned for more adventures into Scandinavian folk music. I will see you in the next video. Hey doll! Tu veux que je fasse un essai pour le papier mm -hmm. Tu essaies de me jeter sur la tête Sur la tête Ouais. Je peux pas, je me parle là. Faut pas que je souris, c'est hyper difficile. Oula, là en plein cœur. Let me explain. Nothing knows.